so I we just got home I don't know who this is for or or, or <laughs> if you listen great if you don't I'm not you don't hurt my feelings but I just felt led to talk about the scripture this is the scripture is Ephesians 2 8 and and, and what it actually says is Ephesians 2 8 says this for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God for by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God you know I, I, I when I think about this I, I, I have to really think about grace we were on our way home we just we just literally got back my wife and I got back from being out with some over my mother-in-law's house and I'm sitting in the car driving home and I'm thinking man Lord thank you for your grace because grace is a gift. It's something we don't even have to work for. It's something that we don't have to try. It's given to us by God. And that grace affords us the opportunity to be loved. It affords us an opportunity to do the things God calls us to do. It affords us the opportunity to still live even though we are funky. And when I mean by funky, I mean even though we have sinned and we're messed up and we can't save ourselves. That grace is what affords us, it allows us to live life and still have an opportunity to be connected back with God. You know, I, I like to think of grace, really when you think of it, grace, I remember growing up, we used to say grace is the empowering presence of God that enables you to be who He's called you to be and do what He's called you to do. In other words, grace affords you an opportunity to get right with God before we go into judgment, before that time comes when we die and we all stand before the King of Kings and Lord of Lords and we're like, hey, do you know me or not? See, grace is not a, 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 a reason or an opportunity to sin. It's really an opportunity to, to get things right. It's not a time for us to just sit in place. It's not just a time for us to say, okay, well, God will forgive me. I can do this. I can I can go out and do wrong and, and God will forgive me for it. Because truth be told, that's how I used to think. I, I'll go out and sin. I'll go do my dirt. In the back of my mind, I'm like, well, I'm going to pray for it later. i ask God to forgive me later. But, but that was misusing grace. That was abusing grace. That was abusing this gift. And when you abuse God's gift, what, what happens is it no longer has that effect, the conviction of, of, of doing wrong no longer convicts you you no longer have a have a hold to it because it becomes so easy and so mundane and rhetorical and we think oh nothing's going to happen because nothing happened at the very moment but what paul was saying to here to the church at ephesus he was like look do you understand grace is a gift from god it's, for, it's by grace that you were saved this is something that that when you look at it you have, the one verse says, "Were saved." This verse says, "Have been saved." This is this is past tense, meaning before you were ever born, before you were ever thought of, before you ever came into existence, before your mom and daddy did their thing and they had you. God gave you an opportunity to know Him. He He had you in mind before you even thought, before you even could phantom who He was or why you even exist. And if you look at that, that is love. That is <laughs> unconditional love. It's a love that's, that's beyond measure. Why? Because think of it this way. That is like me saying to you, Hey, I'm going to forgive you. Even though I may not know what you're going to do. And I'm going to forgive you and pay your debt. Regardless if you're able to pay me back or not. Another way to think of this is like this. Christ forgave us without a guarantee that we would even accept Him. Yeah, I know we know we know God. We, we, he knows all things by all means. But I really want us to, to kind of get this in our minds. Like let let our logical mindset, let our logical theology and, and just ideology kind of grasp this concept. God, through His the shed blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, He sacrificed for our sins before we were even born. Yet while we were still sinners, He saved us. He went out on the limb. He took a risk 
He is the other risk. He gave his life. He went out and risked everything for us without a guarantee that we would even accept the price that he paid. If that's not love, I don't know what it is. That's like somebody paying your debt without you, without even really knowing you, without even a guarantee that you'll still like him. And even still, it's like somebody paying your debt and you're still spitting in their face when you go back and do wrong. Grace is not a time to sit in place. It's a time to get right. It is a time to, it is a gift, it's a gift to accept. You, you don't have to try to fight for it. You don't have to try to pray for it. You don't even have to shout up and down and do your, oh, no, you don't have to do any of that. Grace is afforded to you. It is given to you. All you have to do is accept it. And the way you accept that is, is by saying, Father, here, Lord Jesus, I know I messed up. And I will continue to mess up. Why? Because I'm human. It's just human nature. All of sin and fall short of the glory of God. <laughs> we, we, we're going to always be below standard. We fall short of His glory. We're always going to be below the mark. However, through your grace, that was given by love, afforded to us as a gift, all I had to do is receive it. I'm able to live a life that's pleasing to you. See, God is not looking for you to be perfect. You don't have to try to be perfect. He's not telling you to go to church every single day, even though I believe we should all go to church. Never forsake the assembly of the saints. That's another subject for another day. It doesn't mean that you're going to always pray 24-7. I know. Look, some of us are babes in this walk. We're, we're new to this thing. It doesn't mean that you're going to walk around and, how you doing? I'm blessed and highly favored. It doesn't even mean that. That's all religion rhetoric. That's what it really is. What it means is that I understand that I'm accepted by God. No matter what I do, no matter what I've done, or no matter what I will do, Jesus Christ still loves me. He will always love me. Despite anything. His love has no condition. He just wants me to accept it. And that's by accepting his grace that, hey, I have messed up. I can't do life without you, Father. And that's when we become in power to do what God has called us to do and be who God has called us to be without worrying about anything else, with, 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 without having the constraints of trying to be perfect. When we really accept the gift of God's grace. So if you don't mind, I want to pray for you. If, if you want to Stop the video. You can stop the video. If you if you want to skip and, and you want to like it, great, like it. If you want to share it, that would be awesome. I'd love for you to share it. But I want to pray for you. And I, I want to pray because, you know, <laughs> we're living in a time that it's hard to see what's, what's truth and what's a lie. The lie is told by so many people and it's, it's lived out by so many people that in our minds, it can look like the truth because the majority does it. And just because the majority tends to do something does not mean that it is actually the truth. And I don't want us to get confused with that. I don't want us thinking that we have to try to buy grace or we have to try to, to do something for it with our works. No, no. It's not by our works. Paul said it in Ephesians 8. It's not by our works. But it's a gift afforded to us by Jesus Christ. So, so let's pray. Father, I thank you so much for the opportunity that you afforded each and every person. The persons that are people that are looking at this video, that are listening to me, or even the people who are not listening. Father, every person on this planet has been afforded grace. And I thank you so much for your grace. I thank you that it's not something we have to fight for, something that we have to, to try to achieve or try to obtain but that you've given it to us freely. That you loved us so much that you, you gave your life. That you confined yourself to the very systems that you created. To show us how much you love us. Forgive us the way we've missed the mark. Forgive us for, for messing up and knowingly doing wrong when we know that is not what you want. Forgive us for suppressing our convictions. Forgive us for... for turning our cheek and turning our eye to the things that are not like you and turning away from those things that are. 
Forgive us, Father, for trying to fit in and trying to work these things out by ourselves. And not even acknowledging that you are here, that you care, that you love us. So, Father, I ask you right now, Lord, for those who need a, a touch of your grace, who need your love, Lord, remove every hindrance. Lord, heal those unhealed hurts. Lord, bring resolution to those unresolved issues. Father, meet those unmet needs. Lord, be the answer in their life. Lord, let, let them have such a desire, such a passion to seek after you, Lord. Not try to fit a mold, Lord, but, but let them be outside the box. Let them be so bold, so different, so daring, that it begins to change their life, and not just their life, but the lives of other people. We ask you right now, Father, to do a mighty work in, in us, your people, who you love. Who, you loved us before we even knew you. Before we were even born. Before we were even a concept in our in our parents' mind. Before they even did what they did. Lord, you knew us. Let us not forget that as we go throughout the day. Let us not forget that as we live our lives. As we interact with other people. As we go to our jobs. As we, we have leisure time and just relaxing time. Lord, let us not forget that. Lord, always keep us in remembrance of that grace. Lord, let it not be just a word or just a concept, Lord, but let it be the reality of our life. Let it be the truth that rings forth in our words and in our actions. We thank you so much, Father, for your love. We thank you so much for your grace that is a gift from us. Help us to receive it. Help us to be answers to prayers. Help us to Go above and beyond what we feel and what we think or what others may perceive. But let us be concerned about pleasing you. In Jesus Christ's name I pray. Amen. Hey, I love you. I, I, I am, I'm, I'm rooting for you. If you have any questions, if you any concerns, you're like, man, I want to hear more. I, I want to know more. Hey, let's do it. I have a thing called The Conversations. It's a non-traditional Bible study. And we, we have it in bars. It's funny, I had a, a young lady, she's uh, she's an exotic dancer. In other words, she's a stripper. Uh, and she was like, you're the, you're the guy that has the, the sermons at the bar. I said, yeah, we have it at a bar, at a lounge, maybe we have it at a club. It, it doesn't even matter the setting, it just matters who's there and, and the presence of God is there. And we don't, we don't get real traditional by no means, but it helps us to break the monotony of a traditional setting. And people interact and we have great conversations. And if you want to attend one of those conversations or you want to host one of the conversations, let me know. You have all the information on the link below and even following the video. Again, I'm Stephen J. Palmer. I love you. I'm so proud of you. Accept God's grace. Don't, don't be confined by, 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 by society. Don't be confined or, or limited and conformed to, to the traditions of man. Really understand it's all about relationship. And God wants to have that relationship with you. So, hey, look forward to seeing you later. Have a great evening. Bye for now.